Hey everyone, welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. My name is Tina and I used to be a data scientist at Meta. One of the most common questions I get asked is if data science is a dying field. Is it still a good idea to become a data scientist? And I think this is a very valid concern because how disheartening would it be to spend so much time and money to learn all the data science skill sets of coding, math and stats and business stuff just to realize that you can't get a job. Now, the two most common fears that prospective data scientists have, at least according to what I can tell from my comments and people just asking me, is one, data science is being fully automated and there's no need anymore. And two, too many people just jumped on the hype train and now the job market is too saturated. So in this video, we're gonna unpack these statements and determine if data science is actually dying. But to understand the future of data science, first we need to look at the past. So what is data science? Well, it is defined as the field of study that combines domain expertise, programming skills, and knowledge of mathematics and statistics to extract meaningful insights from data. Okay, great. Now to really understand what data science is, we need to turn back the clock and look at the history of science. People have always liked to have explanations for things because it makes us feel better. In the ancient days, phenomena such as droughts, disease, and other natural disasters were explained by myths. And this was across many different cultures. For example, in ancient Greece, Poseidon was the god of the sea. And Poseidon had a really bad temper. And when he became angry, he would hit the ground with his trident, which caused the earthquakes that devastated the people's lives. So this myth actually made people feel better because they can go like, oh, okay, well, all we have to do is to not make Poseidon angry by doing things like giving him offerings. It's a way for people to feel like they have agency and not feel absolutely powerless. I'm gonna simplify a lot of stuff here, but basically, slowly, people started poking around and observing patterns and regularities. Like if I poke this stone, such a cool thing happens. Very interesting, said those people probably. Please don't use this explanation, by the way, in any formal context, okay? But yes, this was slowly happening and really started to catch on and become fashionable during the Enlightenment. And thus the modern definition of science is born, which is defined as the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Oh, that was a mouthful. Now, how do we collect the measurements of such observations and experiments? Well, that is through data. And data in itself is actually very diverse. It comes from many shapes and forms. For example, there is nominal data that does not have a natural ordering. Like my cat Beep Beep is black and my other cat Boop is gray. Ordinal data, which does have a natural ordering. For example, Beep Beep is bigger than Boop, which is actually not true. Boop is bigger than Beep Beep. Discrete data has numerical values that are integers. For example, beep beep is three and boop is also three years old. And finally, continuous data, like beep beep weighs 10.2 pounds and boop weighs 13.1 pounds. Collections of data like this are the results of our observations and experiments. So now that people started to have this data that they collected, they naturally then wanted to analyze it and draw insights from it. Among ways that people do this, the field of statistics in particular was quite helpful. Again, I'm gonna simplify things a lot over here and not go into full-blown discussion about statistics and other ways of evaluating data, um, but just know that we developed a variety of ways in order to analyze data and get insights from them. As time continues to go on and we have more fancy ways of collecting data now, we now have a lot more data. Naturally, we want to be able to use this data and draw insights from it, but it was becoming harder and harder to crunch these numbers, analyze them, and create models in order to generalize these findings because it was all done by hand. And thus a miracle happened, which was the computer. The computer swooped in and made these science people very happy. Most people at least, because I'm sure some of them were like, oh no, I'm gonna lose my job. Um, but anyways, the computer was amazing because now you can process, analyze, model, and derive insights from so much more data and so much easier. All right, so now let's bring it all back to the definition of data science, which again is the field of study that combines domain expertise, programming skills, and a knowledge of mathematics and statistics to extract meaningful insights from data. Note here, Extract meaningful insights from data. The part about analyzing data to get information is the same for science and data science, right? And this is not a coincidence at all. Really, I like to think about data science as almost an extension of science. You know, I think this intimate relationship between data science and science is something most people don't realize until they start working in the field. And then they realize that they spend a lot of time doing experiments, manipulating data, analyzing data, making models and things. And I'm honestly not super surprised because from what I can tell, 
a lot of learning resources out there have this intense focus on the shiny new tools, like the programming languages, the cool new machine learning models, uh, the different statistical tools, all of these things. But they don't really explain why it's important or what really is the purpose of using these tools and doing all this analysis. I think this is an example of what is that? What is that term? Uh, losing sight of the forest for the trees. Yes. Okay, so now we have established that in many ways, data science is like a progression of science through time. So unless science itself and this pursuit of knowledge is going to go away, the ways in which we do science, which these days is through data science, is also not going to go away. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now you might ask, but Tina, yes, the fundamental need for data science is not going to go away. But what about the skills of data science? Are they going to become obsolete as we have new ways of doing data analysis? And that is an excellent question. So let's now directly address some of the concerns that people have about the data science field. First one we talked about earlier, that data science is being automated and there's no need for data scientists anymore. Okay, bear with me over here. I want to bring you back to the definition of data science yet again. It's the field of study that combines domain expertise, programming skills, and knowledge of mathematics and statistics to extract meaningful insights from data. Let's now focus on the domain expertise part in particular. Domain expertise is the general kind of like umbrella term that is the context in which you're doing your data stuff. For example, if you're creating a model in order to forecast the revenue from ads running on your application, knowledge about how the ads work, the nature of your customers are all domain knowledge that will contribute towards your forecasting. So yes, portions of the programming and the contextual use of mathematics and statistics may get automated. In fact, a lot of the data pipeline is becoming automated, like data processing, analyses, machine learning models, and even deployment. But I want to point out that all of this is useless if there is no domain expertise. Even if many parts of the data pipeline and workflow is automated, you still need someone to actually translate that business problem you're trying to solve into the correct format first. I think a very unappreciated portion of a data scientist's job is supplying the correct context to a model. So here's an example of this importance of supplying the correct context in data. My job at Meta was in Instagram integrity. There was this machine learning model that we used, which screens for content integrity issues and subsequently would demonetize them if they break the rules. So a lot of my job was about getting the data for the model and working with other colleagues to determine what is considered breaking the rules. You may think that my job centered mostly around doing the machine learning stuff, um, but actually a lot of my job was more about getting the data for the model and working with other colleagues to determine what is even considered breaking the rules. This is a really tough problem. And one of the reasons why I think integrity is one of the most interesting problem spaces. The issue is that your model can't detect what is called unknown unknowns. So how do you determine if something is breaking the rules if it's something that you aren't even measuring or you're not even aware of? It is incredible how many edge cases there are, like stuff that you would never think about. Um, so it's always a balance between free speech and integrity. In addition to this, the interpretation of the results is also something that's really hard to automate because again, it requires domain knowledge. What do these results in a model mean in terms of the context wordy business? How do you determine if the model is even doing a good job? What's the metric? These are all questions that data scientists work on. You see, you can have a great model from a technical perspective, but that doesn't mean it solves the problem you're trying to address. Now, there are many more examples I can provide that clearly illustrate why it is that data scientists are not going anywhere, um, but I think you get my point. So speaking about automation of data science workflows, Data IQ, the company behind this channel, is leading the automation and systemization of data science and artificial intelligence pipelines. This is super valuable because it allows data scientists to focus more on the business context to uncover more opportunities and solve more problems. Data IQ it automates things like data cleaning, visualization, machine learning, and data and ML ops. It also provides a single central solution for the design, deployment, and management of AI applications. If you're interested in data science and slash or work in a company that is interested in better incorporating data science into workflows, you should definitely check out Data IQ by going over here, also linked in description. Okay, now hopefully I have convinced you that automation is not going to take over a data scientist's job, but I do want to make a note here that it is causing the profession to evolve though. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video. Um, but for now, let's first address the second big concern that people have, which is that too many people jumped onto the hype train and now the job market is too 
too saturated. This is also a very valid concern because the interest in data science has exploded and more and more people want to be data scientists for a variety of reasons. It's considered a sexy job and the pay is good among many other reasons. However, as this excellent analysis here shows, the data science postings are not reducing over time. According to LinkedIn, there has been a 650% increase in data science jobs since 2012. Although this number did flatten out around 2020, probably due to the pandemic that affected all industries, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics still sees strong growth in the data science field and predicts the number of jobs will increase by 28% through 2026. But let's not actually just leave things here. Let's actually understand why this is the case, why there is still increasing demand for data scientists. First reason is that the amount of data that's being produced is still exponentially increasing across almost all fields. We have so much data that we can collect now, and naturally we want to get insights from them. This requires the work of data people, including data scientists, to sift through that data, analyze it, produce models, and things like that. So if the data isn't slowing down, the demand for people who work on a data is also not going to slow down. In addition to this, I think people really have FOMO. Um, there's this fear that it's too late to jump on a train, when in reality, things don't happen instantly. Like for the computer, it took decades to evolve and gain market share, and that was considered to be very fast. So yes, Data science is a permanent pillar now for companies that are in the cutting edge of technology. For example, Meta, Google, and a lot of tech companies in general. But data science is still at the very early stages for many industries, especially more traditional ones like in finance, healthcare, government, and defense. You may be surprised to know that when I talk to people in those industries, the struggle isn't even yet at why we need better infrastructure and tooling to help support data science. It's literally why analyzing data itself is even important. I have a friend who works in defense and he was explaining to me that even though he had graduated just a couple years back, he's already leading many of the data science projects and frequently hosting meetings and seminars with executives to explain the benefits of data science. This just goes to show how much impact a data science can have, especially in an industry or company that hasn't embraced data yet. All right, so let's now talk a little bit about the evolution of data science. As I said earlier, data science is not dying, but it is evolving. Data scientists are increasingly required to understand domain knowledge and business context. I have personally noticed this and it's also reflected in interviews. Interview questions increasingly not only test you on technical knowledge like programming and statistics, but also how to address business problems and translate them into data problems. As coding for data science evolves as well, there's also more emphasis now for a data scientist to know more than just to write a script on a Jupyter notebook, for example. Data scientists are not expected to be software engineers, but they are expected now to understand how to use things like APIs to pull data, uh, how to write reproducible programs, and how to use the automated tools that are being developed. In some smaller companies, you're also expected to know how to deploy models and monitor them in production. So if I were trying to be a data scientist these days, I would focus on doing projects that really demonstrate my ability to understand business context. Like I always say, Kaggle projects and other personal projects are fun and they're good for learning, but they do not demonstrate that I know how to use data science that actually provides value to the real world. In addition to this, I would also learn to code properly. I mean, not just like write a script, but really understand how to use APIs to pull data um, and just the basics of software engineering, such as computational efficiency, unit testing, and things like that. All right, that is all I have for you today. I hope this video is helpful. Leave a comment and let me know if I've convinced you or not and why. We can continue the discussion in the comments section. And if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and also to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.